Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock for the love of sewing. P&B Fabrics, our fabrics, your lifestyle. And Koala Cabinets, sewing furniture custom built in America. You know, it's a big world out there, a big quilting world, and there are stars, stars in that world. And today we have a star with us from the quilting world, for sure, Nancy Mahoney. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you, Mary. I you appreciate look, you inviting me. Well, you look lovely, and it's really a pleasure to meet you because I have heard your name for so many years. I was, you know, uh, around quilts my whole life, and Nancy Mahoney was always a name that my mom said with with a lot of admiration and respect, and so it's really cool to meet you. Oh, thank you. I've loved your mom for a long time and really admired her as well. So. Makes two nice of us. Nice you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, um, so the show today is kind of in three parts. We're gonna talk to Nancy and get to know her a little bit better, uh, talk about some of the projects that she's working on and has worked on in her career so far. And then we're gonna take a look at a demo, a uh, quick little mini, a mini demo. And then we're gonna have a trunk show. And I'm excited because I asked specifically not to see the quilts before we do the trunk show so I can be as delighted and surprised as everybody watching. So let's talk about, about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> how long have you been making quilts and sewing? I know you did sewing first, right? I started out sewing. I started out making garments mm -hmm. as well as doing alterations. I did alterations for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And it was when I was working at a fabric store in Boise, Idaho, cool. that one of my co-workers and I decided that we were going to make a quilt. Mm -hmm. And it was the centennial of 1976. Yeah. There was no cotton fabric available, and we made our cardboard templates. Needless to say, I've never made that quilt. Yeah, but it yeah. did start me into the quilting world and got me kind of thinking about making quilts. But it yeah. was a few years after that mm -hmm. that I actually made my first quilt. That Centennial started, Bicentennial started so many it's true. quilters. I, my, that's when my mom started. She, there was just this interest, a resurgence of interest in the quilting, in, in the art of quilt making. And that's really cool. You're part of that school. Yes, you know, yeah. I'm from um, that generation. You yeah, might say so, absolutely, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So from there, um, what, what? So when did you catch the bug? Like when did it really did it strike you that you were a quilter? Well, I'd not only always made garments and done a lot of sewing, but I always mm -hmm. did a lot of handwork as well. And there was one time when I had a quilt that my grandmother had made. Actually, it was my great grandmother, and it was a utility quilt, and mm -hmm. we had used it and enjoyed it and loved it, sure. and, and it had become quite threadbare. Mm -hmm. So I decided one day I was going to cover it mm -hmm. as they did in the old traditions, and I was going mm -hmm. to take the old quilt off the top right. and use what was in the center for the center of my quilt. Oh, I love that. I didn't make that quilt either. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not necessarily a finisher? Yeah. Like oh, like a finisher. I'm a finisher. You're a finisher. I'm you, a finisher. You but that's when I went to the quilt. And I went to the yeah. quilt store and I went, oh my goodness, yeah. now there's all this new mm. fabric and there's all these tools and there's yeah. rotary cutting equipment. Yeah. And I took a class and that was it. I was hooked. And that's oh. been... 30 years ago, 30 really. Years ago. And I've been quilting ever since then. And you were one of the, the people, lots of people started to quilt, and lots of people do start to quilt, but you uh, began to make quilts as a career. I mean, you and, and designing fabric, and so that's that's the, the I have all kinds of questions about your c career as a fabric designer and as a, as a quilt maker and an author. We have a couple of Nancy's books right here, in fact. Can you tell me a little bit about, about this one first? Well, this one is my book, Treasures from the 30s, and it's my third book on um, 30s styles quilts. Mm -hmm. So that I've collected as part of my uh, things that I like to do. I like to collect antiques, and I collect patterns that would have been available in the 30s. And I've based three books on those patterns that I got and, through antique stores and collected and put these into these books, and so it's really fun. And then I can use my 30s reproduction fabrics that I do with PMB. Absolutely, and we have some of those, and some of these quilts, well, all of them are just... They're so beautiful, and, and that vintage style is really popular again, you know. And you were saying sometimes you go to, to uh, sometimes online, but also in the shops, you'll buy even just blocks, sometimes tops, sometimes Correct. whole quilts. Yes. It's how yes. fun. That's so fun. And I then there's, there's, a, there's this book, too, which is uh, kind of a Nancy Mahoney's greatest hits. Well, this <laughs> is Fast and Fusible Flower Quilts, and this is from... Um, a lot of quilts that I've done over the years, and some of them have been in magazines, and they were just pulled out from those quilts that I've kind of 
reintroduce them in this new book. I love doing applique and it's been real fun. I'm kind of an eclectic quilter and I like a lot of different styles. I've not really done just one type of style. That's I, I respect that because I'm kind of in a in a groove. I kind of have a look that I'm making lots of quilts in that look, but I don't I don't want to get into a rut, so that's good. I'm glad to hear that you're not ever in a rut either. Uh, and you have another book uh, like out now on paper piecing, right? On paper piecing, yes. Cool, yes. cool. And that's all Martingale. Yes, right? and that will be my newest book. That's the newest awesome. book. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at some of this fabric, too. You were talking about the, the reproduction fabric that you do for P&B, and we have some of it here, and it's like darling, and it's so hot off the presses right now that we don't even have huge pieces of it because it's like being printed. Correct. At this at, time. At this time, right. At this time. Right. At this time. Um, just darling. Can you tell me a little bit about where you found some of these. Well, these are from pieces that I found in my old quilts. I you know, go through my quilts, I lay them out, the blocks, and I might pick one piece out of one block and another piece out of a top or, mm -hmm. or a quilt that I happen to have. And we, I generally like to start with a main piece, and so we started with this piece. And then I pull out other pieces that are various scales and um, textures. Mm -hmm. I like to include some novelties, because 30s were very was a time for novelties. That's when our novelty and conversational prints first came out. And then I like to do um, something where I'll have a little bit darker print to mm -hmm. add some contrast, some that have a lighter background, mm -hmm. and again, some oh. that are just smaller I scale love that. and just fun and just they fun. They are. They're darling. I yeah. just the little shovels and and these little ha hash marks. They're really these fabrics are great. If you're a newer quilter, you'll find soon that some some fabric works really well in piecing and some works differently in piecing. It's not that it doesn't work well, but these little depression era prints are tiny and they're just, you'll use them again and again and again. I do. I mean, I just think they're great. And I wanted to show one thing. This was in the, the swatches that you brought. I thought this was so cool. I just wanted to show it to people. This is what's called a strike off when you're uh, designing fabric and they print up some samples. This is what it looks like as you're working through the process. I just think that's neat how it bleeds off, you know, just into the muslin, the plain well, muslin. Well, you know what they're doing, Mary, is this is where your repeat is. Oh, neat. So what they're doing is that somewhere on this other side, this is where it fits in and it joins in for a oh. screen. Can you, I mean, I love it. I, I'm, I'm learning all kinds of things. I just, I want to do it. I want to design some. <laughs> cool. It's really fun. Uh, it's and then there's, there's another line we want to look at before we go to our demo. Um, this is Florenzia, and mm -hmm. Florenzia is that other side of me that right. likes to have these dark, rich colors that I can use with applique and my floral quilts. Couldn't be more different. You're right. You do not. <laughs> you are not like in a rut by any means. Uh, this is lovely. Really, really nice florals, and and, uh, and and it's a really fun. This piece is really fun. It's a nice beautiful, rich colors, and then you have all the coordinates that go with it, so. Great, beautiful. So uh, before we go to the demo, I wanted to talk about your um, other family member. You live in Florida with your husband, and you, you all have a little, um, you have a pet. We have an unusual pet for a lot of people. Pet. I have an umbrella cockatoo, and his name is Prince. I think we can get a picture of Prince in here. Um, he's it's the stories about your bird are so awesome. I just love it that you have, and, and he's he's been with you for a while, right? We've had him for he's thirty years old, and we've had him for thirty years. We got him when he was three or four years old. So. And he's moved around the country with you as you've he moved. He has. When we moved from Seattle, um, we had to take him on the plane with us. But yeah. of course, you couldn't carry him in the. <laughs> no one would want right. him actually in the part of the plane where the people are. Yeah. So we had to put him in the hold yeah. and he had to go into a dog carrier and we had to buy him a plane ticket. Which really? Which cost more than our plane no. ticket. No. And he had to go in the hold and we were sitting in the plane and we could hear him down in the hold squawking. No. Was he yes. talking? No, he's just loud. He okay, was just, just screaming. Okay. He was unhappy and so he was screaming <laughs> oh, no. down in the hold and we could think, Oh yeah, that's our bird. That's <laughs> our, that's our prince. That's yeah, part of our family. Is. Yeah, that, yeah that's he's sweet. fun. He's he's fun. Yeah, beautiful. That beautiful. He white likes to help is. me make quilts. Does he really? How does he help? He just watches and makes sure. He watches sure, and yes. makes sure I'm doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. And and if if I would let him, if I have a quilt in my lap and I'm sewing on the binding, yeah. he likes to crawl underneath the quilt really? and and hide under the quilt. Yeah. That's so cool. Well, for more on Nancy, uh, go to nancymahoney.com and P&B and Martingale. All those, all those places are, are places where you can find more about Nancy. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this uh, block, the quilt behind us. We're going we're gonna to do a demo on this awesome fan block. Hi, 
Hi, you're watching Quilt with the Stars. I'm Mary Fonz, and I'm joined here by Nancy Mahoney, the fabulous, the star. <laughs> We're all starstruck. Uh, Nancy makes nothing but gorgeous quilts. Oh, I, thank you, Mary. It, it's true. It's true. <laughs> we have one extra gorgeous one today, Fan Dance. Let's take a look at your quilt, Nancy. Tell me a little bit about this one. Well, Mary, this one is all applique, and it can be done as a machine applique project or as a hand applique if you wanted to have a project to take with you as you oh. were, you know, traveling yeah. or taking your kids to to their uh, games or something like that. Absolutely. So it's a great project. It's good to have something with you to take along. It is. Cool, yeah. cool. Well, let's take a look at how to make one of these awesome blocks. Okay. So what I do first is I always do a printout. And since I use electric quilt, I just print it out out of the computer. Of course, mm -hmm. it'll be in the magazine. This quilt will be available right. in the Love of Quilting magazine. That's and right. so the printout will be in the magazine. And that'll be March, April of 2012. Correct. Yep. So I cut a uh, square, my background square, and I just line it up in the corner for placement. It makes it really handy that I can just lay everything on that, and then I don't have to worry about marking my lines. Yeah, nice. Now, these four pieces, what I do is I take a template, and I just make a template out of regular template plastic. Mm -hmm. I, this template includes my seam allowance. I lay it on my fabric, and then I use a rotary cutter just to cut along the edge, or I can use a ruler if I don't want to cut against my template, mm -hmm. and I can place it on there, slide it up against it, and remove my template, and then cut along the edge of I'd the ruler. I'd probably put the ruler down. I mean, I just think I'd start slicing through my template, but some people wouldn't have to do it. Well, you I've been known to, to slice through my template. Oh, really? So, you too? Yeah, I just put a little tape on it. I love it I when they tell me those things. Great. Then what I do is I use a regular just glue stick pen, mm -hmm. and I just mark along. See, I can see where my marks are. Right. And I just mark this along there. Sometimes I tape this down, or I pin it, my background down, mm -hmm. so that I glue all of those in place. Okay. Okay. And that glue just washes out. This right. is a Great. water soluble glue. Beautiful. And you just want to do that on all the lines, on all of the pieces, so that those are held in place temporarily. Mm -hmm. The next thing I would do is I would make a template out of template plastic that is a no melt. It's a heat resistant. And this template, just so they can see, this template and this template, these are made out of different materials. Sure. So this is what you just said, but I wanted to kind of show them together. If, correct. And if you would iron against this template, it would melt. So no melting. Bad. No melt, melting. Yes. And your pattern will tell you these things and give you the supply list, so look for the love of quilting issue. So, so you want to make sure that when you make this template, it's out of the no melt. Mm -hmm. Then I cut a strip. This will be all in the pattern. I cut a five and a half inch strip. And I just lay my template on there. And that template does not include the seam allowance, Correct. right? Because we're going to fold over and iron what Nancy's going to show you. So I would want to allow for that. I would want to mm -hmm. space it over so that it's about a quarter of an inch on that side and about a quarter of an inch on this side. And then I would cut my piece with a rotary cutter. Cool. You could mark it with a pencil mm -hmm. and cut it without the template there. Nice. And you've cut a few of those then already, Then I pre-cut right? some already. Great. So this is my piece here, and you can see it's a little bit larger than my template. I'll right. just move this out of the way okay. for the time being. And I'm do this is just starch that I've put a little bit of water in. Mm -hmm. And I also like to use these pounces. You can get oh, these in yeah. your regular craft store. That's the tiniest little pounce I've I know, ever isn't seen. it cute? I like it because it really allows you to paint that starch on your fabric and just get a nice coverage on your fabric. And you can do it with your template or without your template. Okay. It's a pouncelet. It's a pouncelet. Like a, a 0.8 ounce pounce. And then I just use I the know. tip of the iron and I just press the seam allowances over the template. Mm -hmm. You want to hold it until it's dry. Just make sure it's good and dry. You don't want steam, although we have steam. Well, Let's we can see. turn that, turn there that you steam go. off. Because you don't want to burn your fingers. Right. Oh, and there's this little tip, too, about non-burning So then fingers. when I turn it around to do right. the other side, sometimes your template is still kind of hot. Uh-huh. And then I can use my little stick here. This is just a regular popsicle stick. It's tricky. I like it. Very, very uh, ingenious and, and, and not hold intuitive. it in place so that I can press the other side. Innovative, yes. Innovative. And we had a friend, uh, we did this tip on TV not too long ago, a hairstylist friend. Uh, there's a few curling irons that come with a little glove, a little heat resistant glove. So you, when you're curling your hair, you don't burn your fingers. Well, those little gloves are awesome for doing this kind of thing too. So, so there I have both of those pressed. I, use, I remove my template and then I just press it one more time sure. just to make sure everything's being held in place. Set it. Mm -hmm. Then I use a little bit of fabric glue. This is just a regular water-soluble glue. Like a basting Like basting a basting glue. glue. Mm -hmm. 
and I just put a little bit along the edge of each side. Doesn't have to be neat. That's the great thing about this project. Nice. You don't have to be neat. This is kind of combining some quilt making and some crafting almost. I mean, there's kind of some, you know. And then you just lay that on top like yeah, that. And you'd make that. one for each one. Beautiful. Here's another one here. There's another one there. Great. That's a nice edge. That looks awesome. Okay, what Then we do this piece mm -hmm. here. I've already cut a piece. I cut a three and a half inch strip. I lay my template on it. I add the seam allowance mm -hmm. so that I end up with a piece that looks like that. Then I take it over the ironing board and I just repeat the process of putting glue on it, or I'm sorry, putting starch on it. Mm -hmm. We like to call these the crust and the pie. Yes. And we, and we came up with the other day that this was the, the ice cream or the a la mode, you know, the, the little And the little you point. just use the edge of the iron again just to work that over there until you get a nice, crisp piece mm -hmm. that's not wanting to there we go. And you, you do have to take time with you these, have to take right? Time I mean, it, yeah. you, we're kind of speeding through a, a demo today, but of course you'd take time with it. And then again, I would apply glue along that. Mm -hmm. And maybe we could show the one I've already great, glued. Great, great. And we'll just switch this out. All right. So the, here you can see all the pieces already glued into place. Mm -hmm. And we have one more piece, which is the arc. Great. That goes on the outside. Mm -hmm. Now, for this technique, I just cut a bias strip that's one inch wide. This is a half inch bias tape maker. And you just start it in there. You start with the point. When you pull it through, you I, just. I love those little things. I have to say. Great? It's like a little game. I don't know. It's like. And you just run that iron along there. Cheap thrills, you know. And then, Mary, I found if I spray this with starch mm -hmm. before I iron it and just let it dry, mm -hmm. you get a nice crisp edge mm -hmm. to it. Cool. I'm going to run off the edge there, mm -hmm. but we'll be fine. I can help you. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue mm -hmm. all along the edge here. Mm -hmm. I really, I like the, the design is really great. Part of it. Part of the effectiveness, I think, is that your black is really framing that fan. You know, it just mm -hmm. really makes it pop. It's really And cool. then I would just glue that in place mm -hmm. all the way around. And then I would come back and apply glue on the inside edge along here sure. and glue that all into place. And then do you, do you get, give the whole thing a press? I don't. You don't? Okay. I don't. Okay. At this point, I would take it to either to, to my sewing machine or I would plan on doing it by hand. If I was going to do it machine applique, I would have a choice of using a monofilament thread uh -huh. if I didn't want the stitches to show. Right. Or with this, I actually could use a black thread right. and match it to the color. And I think on your on your quilt, you did a blanket stitch with the monofilament. I did monofilament. a very tiny blanket stitch with the monofilament thread. And that's on the on the a la mode, at, right? Right. It's on the sticks. And on the sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on both sides of this outer curve. Right. On the frame. The, on the frame. The frame of the fan. And then you join your blocks together at your sewing machine. Correct. You and just lay them out as I've shown in the quilt. Yeah. Sew them together. There's nothing to match, so you don't have to really even pin. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about pinning. Yeah, right? we were. Um, and you just sew them together and then add your borders on. It's just awesome. I love the red and black and white. It's very, very modern. Very modern of you, Nancy. Thanks. Um, <laughs> cool. So the next part of our show, I uh, hope you stick around for that or check it out. We're going to do a trunk show with Nancy and take a look at pictures of her studio as well. So join us for that. You're watching Quilt with the Stars, and I'm here with Nancy Mahoney, and we've had a great time today talking about some quilts that she's made, some projects that she's been working on, and we did a demo too, and now it's trunk show time. And Nancy, you brought your, ca you brought your camera. I did, Mary, because I wanted you to see my studio. I want to see your studio. I'm dying to see it, actually, so let's, let's check it out. Well, I have this great wall that I can use as my design wall, and it's about eight feet tall and Whoa. like 96 inches long. I have a really nice size room that I can use that. And then I have a nice cutting station. I set up three different stations. One is my cutting station, mm -hmm. and that's a kitchen table, a kitchen island. Yeah, this it's the one here on the right, and and you, that's a kitchen. Uh, you it's got a it, like, kitchen the... island. Cool. And it's 36 inches tall, so it's a nice height for me to right. cut. And I can put all of my cutting there with my big mat, and I don't have to move things then as I want to cut an iron. And what and about And then this? this is my ironing station. That bit with the drawers is, and everything. I got two. Um, Chester drawers that were uh -huh. 36 inches tall, and then I put a big board oh. on top of that and covered it 
I didn't notice that. When I first looked at the picture, I thought it was a kind of a dresser thing that maybe you had put ironing, a pad, and felt, and all that kind of stuff on top. But no, you, well, you... I built it, really. You built, you built it. That is awesome. So that it's wide enough that it would be 36 inches wide. It would hold my big mat right. if I wanted it to. And it's about 80 inches long. So I can iron a big quilt on it and iron big pieces of fabric that on it. That is half my problem sometimes. I and mean, when I'm pressing a, a large quilt, it's like, how do I manhandle this thing? But that's, that's brilliant. So here's another shot of my um, cutting area. And you can see where then I have my sewing area in front of the window so I can look out at my backyard and at my garden and see Beautiful. the hummingbirds coming to my to the window. I love that that nice yellow you've got on the walls too. It's super fun? cheery, but it's neutral, so it's neutral. not gonna skew any of your That's of right. your design work. And I invested in a quilting machine not too long ago, so awesome. I'm able to uh, do all my own machine quilting on a bigger machine. Now. Are you enjoying it? I the, love it. Cool. I really love my, it. My mom's getting into it too. She she works uh, she does a few a few projects every once in a while, and she really I've tried long arming you know machine quilting. On a, on a small machine, but then also long arming. It's really, it takes time to develop those skills. Well, because I've done a lot of free motion quilting on mm -hmm. my Bernina, I got the APQS George, which you sit down oh, to sew. Right. And so you have the benefit of a long arm machine, but you move your quilt just like you would if you were sewing on your regular sewing machine. I love APQS. They're smart. They are. Smart They're folks. very smart. So here it is. Just a couple more shots yeah. of my um, workstations with with my wall and um, I also use my computer in the same room. Mm -hmm. So my ironing table or my, my sewing table is a library table, an antique library mm -hmm. table and I can always set my laptop up next to it and yeah design my quilt on my laptop and, yeah, and quilters. then have it right there and print out my pattern and... Quilters are some tech savvy people. I mean, we're that. just, there's so much of a community online and I mean, there's we're online right now. That's you right, know? that's right. That's beautiful. And there's the fan dance quilt. There's the, the fan dance wall. quilt on the design wall. Well, let's take a look at some more of these quilts that you're making in this workshop. Okay. In this studio. Uh, the first one here, I love this fabric, this PNB fabric, Spring Street, right? Yes, is that the this line? is Spring Street. Tell me about this one. Well, this quilt is called Roundabout, and this is in the Fonz and Porter Scrappy, Easy Scrappy Quilts that um, is on newsstands. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do something that had circles in it. Mm -hmm. So this is a two-block quilt. So this is one block here that is just a piece, regular piece block. Great. And then this block here is string pieced, mm -hmm. and then I did the appliqued the arcs on it in, using the same technique I used for the fan dance quilt. Oh, really? Oh, and then I finished cool. it off with the piano keyboard. Sure, and it just, it showcases all of these whimsical, bright fabrics. I mean, what's cool about this quilt, there's a lot of things I love about it, but it could be a, a kid's quilt. It could be. Or for anybody, and it could be boy, girl, what I mean, like, it's right, everybody loves this. And it's kind of controlled scrappy, so it has a limited yep. number of fabrics in it, which makes it a little bit easier than having to try and pick a bunch of different fabrics, which and can be challenging. And, for some and it takes longer, you know, if you're using just a few, it, yeah. it goes faster. Cool, I Definitely. love it. I love white in quilts, I have to say. Isn't that fun? It's my favorite. Ah! So a different style. I Hello. told you I was an eclectic kind of quilter. <sighs> this different is like it's by a different person almost. <laughs> this is using PNB's group called Beloved Beauties. Gorgeous. And this is in Love of Quilting, December, January. Mm -hmm. uh, 11, 2011. So, um, is that right? Yes. Ooh. Okay, great, great. Yes. And it uses the applique block. It again is a two block quilt. Mm -hmm. And this is a fusible applique technique. But instead of doing like a blanket stitch or a zigzag stitch, mm -hmm. I just did a straight stitch around the edges with the sulky 60 weight poly mm -hmm. light thread. Mm -hmm just so that it would be a little bit more of a sophisticated look. Absolutely, and it raises that, that design up just a little bit to really showcase it. It's beautiful. This is just that rose color with the green. It's just lovely. It's a Christmas quilt, but it's not really Christmas. -y. Is it really? Okay. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Oh, I want to see the next one. It's like moving along to see all of them in the time that we have. This, this is so cool. This looks like denim. I mean, surely that's kind of the it's point, right? the point, yes. This Tell, is one of PNB's new groups called yeah. Expressions 2. Uh, Expressions 1 was all neutrals, and so uh -huh. they brought it out in a second group that was done in all the denims. Uh, it's a really fun quilt. We wanted to do something that was a little bit more contemporary, and mm -hmm. you can kind of tell I like working with circles. You do like the circles. So, uh, I'm seeing a pattern <laughs> emerge a little bit. So again, I just did, a, it's kind of, it's two blocks, uh -huh. but I did uh, two different blocks that were applique, and then I just put a plain square in between. And you know, this is one of those lessons in contrast. I mean, th these fabrics are low contrast with each other, but they're, they're, the patterns are, are different enough that you see these, these shapes emerge, uh, but it's really kind of a wash of denim 
Mm. Oh, it's definitely. It's and awesome. I really had to play the light and dark against each other so that you could mm -hmm. see the design. And I also did a piece border in here so that my borders are asymmetrical. Oh, that's right. You know, I didn't notice that right away, but this is just the solid pieces and then and this then is, this is again in the opposite corner. Oh, tricky. Very clever, Nancy Mahoney. Very clever. It just is a fun thing that you can do to add a little punch to your quilts. Absolutely. I love it. It's like, yeah, it's like blue jeans. Very cool. Very fun. Okay. Now this, this is called oh, I promise flowering. not to look at the quilts before now, so I'm seeing them with you for the first time. Flowering is, Star from the new fabric collection. Yeah, the one Florencia. we saw. Yes, uh -huh. the new fabric collection. We've come full circle, you see. Um, yeah, the, the, the little pebbles, they look like little pebbles uh, there and, and then the flowers together. It's almost like, a, yeah, it's a garden, flowering garden. It right? is. Cool. It is. And this quilt, as well as the blue quilt, are free patterns that are, you can download off of the PNB website. Great, great. We'll get the website up there. Uh, and then, so, so you, all these quilts that you've shown us, you've designed them? I've designed and them. And made them. I and mean, made them and quilted them. You're like, it's a one-woman show. I mean, I aspire to to be doing these things. I have to say I'm kind of a topper right now. I am, I am doing design, but, but I, I want to do a quilt from start to finish, you know, just like this. Well, I'm usually on a schedule, and it means I have to finish a quilt yeah, by when a deadline. Do you, when do you sleep? <laughs> I sleep well. I'm tired at the end of the day. <laughs> She's exhausted right now, actually. <laughs> uh, okay, we've got two more quilts to got show. One, yes. Okay. Well, I couldn't oh, come without man. showing you one of my 30s quilts. And this is a little applique quilt that I did using actually the same technique I showed today with the starch. I turned the edges yeah. and did machine applique with the invisible thread. It's darling. I this mean, it's, is, yeah. Yeah, and this is one this, of my fabric lines. It this may is, be my favorite. This is one of, the, yeah, one of one your of my 30s. my 30s fabric lines. Is mm -hmm. this in one of the books, the 30s? Um, no, this is one I made for me. Oh, good. Can you believe I'm, it? I'm glad to hear it because you're doing all this stuff for other people. I'm really happy to hear that you did one for yourself. It may be in a book eventually. But Probably will be, knowing yeah. you. But right now, it's, I just get to enjoy it. So. Well, your circle, where did you get the uh, the size? D did you just kind of figure it out? Do you have one of those circle tools? I or? use a, um, you know, you, can, you have all kinds of drafting tools that yeah. you can get at yeah. the office place mm -hmm. well they have circle makers that's why so I just use the circle maker made a plastic template out awesome. of the heat resistant mm -hmm. template mm -hmm. material and just made my circles it's it's darling the pink is like bubblegum perfect perfect pink and we have one more quilt to show we actually hung it up on the wall tell me about this guy well this one is called modern maze and this is using PNB's new collection called downtown and so I named it because it's a maze of streets in the downtown area because of the colors, as well as the maze that you get when you put the blocks together. And it's the same block, it's just the way that it's turned that you get this interlocking design. It's incredible. One of the things I like about this is how the border fabric is repeated or vice versa. The inner, those inner squares are repeated in the border. It's the same fabric. And I just think it creates this depth that is wild. And I live in downtown Chicago, so, so I'm a big fan of the of the whole concept of this quilt, this downtown maze. It is kind of like a maze sometimes. It is. Especially if you've been in Chicago, Lower Wacker Drive, it's a maze. Yeah. You'll know Definitely. what I mean if you've been there. <laughs> and and uh, the back of the, of the quilt, we, we may not be able to see it. We may be able to, but it's like a building. It's uh, a building material, buildings. and that's where the name from downtown comes from for the collection, is that it's a, a couple of the pieces have buildings in them. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Nancy Mahoney. I mean, I've learned stuff, and I, I thank you so much for coming on the show and, t and talking about your studio, talking about the quilts you make. Uh, we're a community of quilters, and we learn from each other, and it's just really been a pleasure. Well, thank you, Mary. I've really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. And cool. We are a community. We are. Let's stick together. Bye. This episode of Quilt with the Stars is brought to you by Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. P&B Fabrics, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Walla Cabinets, sewing furniture custom-built in America.